The Maldives is home to diverse marine life and a unique geography attracting many tourists each year. While the Maldivian waters are some of the most remarkable, they're under constant threat. The world's oceans are suffering in a number of ways, but one that affects the Maldives is the problem of ghost nets. Ghost nets are fishing nets that have been lost, abandoned, or discarded at sea. These drifting nets trap and kill marine organisms. Entangled fish act as bait, attracting larger predators, such as turtles, sharks, whales, and dolphins that may themselves become entangled. Most entanglements go unnoticed. Smothering coral reefs, ghost nets can cause further loss by spreading disease, parasites, and invasive species to reef environments. They affect the sustainability of well-managed fisheries by damaging boats and killing species with economic value. Ghost nets can also impact the beauty of shorelines, resulting in expensive cleanup costs. Oceanic currents carry nets long distances, making them difficult to track. Although ghost nets negatively impact the Indian Ocean's economic and ecological resources, the cause and magnitude of this problem remain unknown. The Olive Ridley Project, founded in the Maldives in 2013, attempts to identify key factors contributing to ghost nets in the Indian Ocean. In its first year, the project recorded a minimum of 107 ghost nets. In 54 of those nets, at least one, and sometimes more, turtles were found entangled. The Olive Ridley sea turtle accounted for 61 of all recorded entanglements, followed by the hawksbill turtle with four, and the green turtle with one. Maldivian law does not allow any form of net fishing within its exclusive economic zone. Traditionally, pole and line and hand line are the predominant fishing techniques, so where are these nets coming from? There are three major fishing techniques used in the Indian Ocean that may contribute to ghost net production. Persane fishing, associated with DFADs, drifting gill nets, and trawling. Ghost nets may also come from merchant ships or illegal fishing operations. There is still little information available on the sources or amounts of ghost gear generated. The Indian Ocean's two main monsoons, the southwest and northeast, affect currents and dictate where ghost nets travel, with many being found in the Maldives. 68% of all of Ridley entanglements were encountered during the northeast monsoon. This may be because it coincides with the Olive Ridley nesting season in Orissa, India. Olive Ridleys have a spectacular way of nesting in a phenomenon known as an arabada. Thousands of turtles gather offshore every year in preparation for a mass nesting event on the east coast of India. After they are born, juvenile turtles find mats of floating algae that act like many ecosystems complete with food and shelter. Unfortunately, many mistake ghost nets for algae and become entangled. In its first year, 77% of turtles recorded by the Olive Ridley Project were juveniles. The real number of entanglements is impossible to estimate since counts rely on the sightings of live or recently deceased animals. The Olive Ridley Project is a citizen science-based project where anyone can contribute to the prevention of ghost nets. If you're currently in the Indian Ocean, you can get involved by removing any ghost nets you find when snorkeling or walking the beach. You can collect valuable information on the design of the net and associated marine organisms to help scientists identify where these nets are coming from. Visit www.oliveridleyproject.org to contact us or find out more. If you're not in the Indian Ocean, you can contribute by carefully selecting the fish you eat. Since 22% of the world's tuna comes from the Indian Ocean, it is important to only support brands that specify tuna caught using pole and line. Brands that do not specify their fishing method are likely employing nets which are responsible for high levels of bycatch and ghost net production. The health of our oceans affects everything from the vast numbers of marine creatures and plants to the human communities who rely on the sea as their main source of income. The ocean impacts the food we eat and the air we breathe, and every act helps in the effort to conserve our seas.